Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Watch of Crappens bonus episode. I'm Ben. That's Ronnie. How's it going, Ronnie? Well, hello, Bean. What you doing? Not much. I'm just excited to talk some Summer House, this shit show of a season in the best possible way. It's continuing on. I uh, I love it because last week it was like Lindsay is such a monster, but I feel like this week it's like well she is also working with Carl. She's got to deal with Carl. So the pendulum <laughs> swings from week. To Listen, week. guys, I know that a lot of my comments were controversial with some of you I'm saying I'm st sticking up for Lindsay too much, but I'm going to give you a piece of knowledge that I learned from my mother a long time ago that I will never forget, and that is this saying: Rondel, no woman makes herself crazy. Okay. Mm. Behind every good man is a good woman. And behind every crazy woman is a man. Mm. And I <laughs> believe man. it. I have not Any seen man. proof otherwise to this day. And I'm an old bitch. So I stand by it. Yeah. Well, let's dive right into it. So um, we are we're picking up right where we left off with Lindsay. Uh, we're still in their fight from uh, it's the morning after she's accused him of, of being high on coke. And she's like, you were treating me like shit last night. Why'd you say that I am sober right now? When she tells us, oh my God, he was cocaine, girl. I love that. I need that movie. It's <laughs> like the girl. sequel to Cocaine Bear, just Cocaine Carl. Cause later we get a <laughs> clip of Cocaine Carl and it is so Carl, just like, what? We're not dating. We're not. <laughs> well, Check you're like crazy right now. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like, why would you say right now if you meant you're sober? And he goes, uh, because in that moment, you were not sober. So you were drinking all day long. You are rude and aggressive to me. Uh, I'm trying to be supportive of you. And you shut me down. And I'm like fighting you. So I was saying, um, I'm sober right now. I'm sober right now. You're screaming at me. Why are you screaming at me right now? Because I'm upset. Okay? Right and I'm allowed to be upset. And I'm allowed to have emotions. Like, have you ever heard of that? Like, you're allowed to get pissed off whenever you want. So why can't I have emotions? I don't scream. I don't scream. I do not scream. I'm not screaming. <sighs> You were screaming. He's like, I'm frustrated. Okay, but you keep pushing him too. You know what I mean? Like you keep pushing that button. So why are you? <laughs> Lindsay is so Lindsay. She's like, oh my God, you're drunk. You're a cokehead. I can't believe it. Oh my God, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> I know, she totally does that. Why are you? <laughs> That's the th she was like, she's like, can you believe how he was like acting? He was like so wild this morning. It's like you came in and we're like, you came in with such an attitude and we're so angry. And then like you're accusing him of screaming. It's wild. It's so funny. But it's also such a couple who have gone to therapy two times. You know how you can mm -hmm. tell those couples because they've learned the right things. Like the worst thing to do is to lose your cool in the conversation. So they just stay. They just provoke each other until the other one gets pissed. And when the other one gets pissed, they're like, I won because you're pissed. And they both do it. And it's mm -hmm. hilarious. You guys, you have it's to go pure to, fuckery. You have to go to therapy more than two times. Okay. Yeah. So um they, so he goes out, help me let me take my uh, morning run. <laughs> And then everyone else is sort of like waking up and doing things. Kyle's taking the dogs out to pee. West wants to do a cannonball in the pool. So he does a cannonball in the pool. And so Carl comes back from his run and he's in the kitchen <laughs> and he sees Gabby there. Hey, oh, good morning. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little sweaty. I was just like doing my morning run. It's kind of like my thing, you know? I'm like, yeah, wake up early, do my run. It's kind of healthy new Carl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like, oh, thanks for checking in last night. Oh, yeah, that was just for you. That wasn't because she was in bed next to Lindsay, uh, proving what a good friend she is by calling you on speaker. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. Yeah, well. She's like, yeah, I just need to, like, simmer that. Because, oh. like, she, like, had a weird feeling. And, like, uh, she she was going to, all the girls were going to hate her because she wasn't in the girls' car. But then I was like, it's okay that you're not in the girls' car. But then she was like, it's not okay. You don't understand. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just being calm here. Why am I calm and you're not calm? It's like, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, like, it's like a problem because, like, I'm calm. I just want I just want to get it out there so everybody understands. Uh, I was calm in that situation, so I won that fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, well, you're attacking me. And I'm like, I'm not attacking you. I was like, calm. Uh, and then we cut to Paige blowing her nose, which is like very Paige, like, hmm, like that. And then she comes in the kitchen and she's like, so um, what happened last night? I like didn't black out because uh -huh, black is like last season. I like browned out, which is much more on trend. And like it's so, so Paige <laughs> to like be lazy in her blackout. 
<laughs> like you can't even give a full blackout. You're going to brown out page. Come on. It's like, um, <laughs> that's like a blackout, but I'm doing it from bed. So, <laughs> so, uh, Jesse was flirting with Paige. Um, and, uh, Lindsay's asking how long Danielle stayed out. They're just sort of like chatting and, um, West is talking to um, a dog. There's like one of the dogs he's talking to it. And he's like, he's like, you're a very handsome. You look very handsome right now. And Paige is like, um, it's a girl. So she's gorgeous and beautiful. He goes, but handsome still works for dogs, girl dogs. She goes, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, Lindsay is telling Gabby, which it's like, lady, could you stop ruining everybody's summers all the time with your relationship drama? My God, every fucking summer. It's like, oh my God, this is how I got fucked over last night by the guy I went. Okay, so, so I tried to go in there this morning, but I was like, you weren't nice, nice last night. And he was like, so defensive. And he was like, cutting me off. And then before you know it, he's like this hairy beast running through the forest, killing hot people. Cocaine bear Carl. <laughs> So uh, she's like, yeah, it was just like, like, are you like, like, what's going on? Like, it was like old Carl, like more life Carl. It was like very dismissive and like aggressive. And like, I absolutely have like PTSD from like that Carl. So then we get the, I mean, I get life. it, but don't marry Vietnam. You know what I mean? That's the thing. It's like, well, the, the thing is this, Carl, Carl is very fresh on his journey and uh, there's still lots of work to do. So like maybe give it some space, give it some space before we jump into, the, into that. Also don't marry a person without a job. Or that. Standing or by that. who's never. Okay, there are signs here that job. we learned throughout this episode that I'm like, uh, okay, you're just making bad decisions now. Okay. There's nothing I could listen. I've got your back, but at some point, make better decisions okay yeah. that's, i think that's my macro note for this episode so I she's like i think um, that's that what's was hard like... with carl is that like he has never been good with employment and i think that we thought oh it's because he had substance abuse issues and so now that he is sober like he will be a much more productive and useful employee or worker but now we're realizing it might not be a substance issue it might be a carl issue one of the hardest things about getting sober is stuff that you blamed on non-sobriety was not the problem. <laughs> yeah. It's just a kind of a detour, um, unfortunately. Yeah. That's just how life works. Yeah. It's not just Carl, it's really all of us. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, so it's like you're really big and you wanna lose a lot of weight because your life is gonna get so much better. It doesn't necessarily. You're still the same person who just wants a Snickers underneath it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. you're lazy, you don't wanna go to work and you blame it on smoking too much weed. Guess what? You stop doing the weed, you still can't get your thoughts together and you still don't wanna fucking work, okay? Yeah. Sometimes we're just doing what we can to get along. Mm. It's got very so sad. The, okay, I quit. I, got I quit sad. the show. I've reached the end of the show. Kyle. Thank you for coming. So, <laughs> the producer asked uh, Lindsay if she ever thought at any point Carl was not sober. She's like, no. So they're like, well, then why did you feel like you wanted to tell him that you're not acting sober? You're not sober. I mean, listen, I 1000% like should have used like more delicate words in that moment, which admittedly were like non yelling words. Let's just remind everyone that. But I'm like also like so taken back by his like aggressiveness in this moment. I'm like trying to figure out like where it's coming from. And like he's treating me in a way that it's like just like startling. And like it's just like very much like old Carl, which I have PTSD from. So like that's why I said it that way. <laughs> So then we go to Carl and Kyle and Kyle, you know, hates this relationship as usual. And so he's going to do his usual, oh, I love Lindsay, but I do really think that, like it's right. Cause like she was so wrong last night. Like, do you really think you're going to last with Lindsay? Like, oh. Which, you know, as his best friend, I think he's kind of allowed to say that, but weren't you the one last year who was like, fucking Carl, I had to stand up for you when you came in on Coke and ruined that meeting I know. and all this other <laughs> stuff. Let's not act like you're so on a level above Lindsay, sir. Okay. It was exactly. just last season. It was just last season that you threw Carl's uh, drug issues in Sobriety his in his face. Right. Right. So Carl's like, well, oh, I just don't want to like, blame her. And, and Kyle's like, yeah, but Carl, Carl, like last night was like unacceptable. Like... I've heard like some crazy shit, but this is like next level. And I can see you're like trying to make compromises or sacrifices and like you're trying to solve the problem. But like last night she was the problem. Okay. Wedding is November. Like, does this freak you out? Do you maybe want to cancel it? You should probably cancel it. Should we just like never invite her back to the, to the summer house? I don't know. Just thinking out loud. 
and what everybody should be saying before their wedding. He goes, um, like, I think that it makes me sad more than anything. <laughs> Thinking about the wedding. <laughs> Oh. Like more than anything, I'm sad. Kyle's like, yeah, like, well, but like, how how does how many times does something have to go down? Like where she's like pitting it on you, but like it had nothing to do with you. Because like that's a long life of like falling on a sword. You know what I mean? Like how long are you gonna do that? Like if you're gonna whip out your sword, I hope it's with me in the backyard while we're crossing streams. You know what I mean? Are you we can still be able to do that? Let's take out our dicks right now. Yeah, but bro, like I hear what you're saying, but like. We do have like a neon sign together. And so like, if we were to break up, like who gets the sign? Like what happens to the sign? Are we still a rat house? Do we just have a sign that well, someone has rat and someone has house? Like you have to think about these things, bro. Every time I think about leaving her, that giant blockbuster video store style cutout of Lindsay stares back at me. And like <laughs> her smile is so nice. And she's just like so flat that I'm like, this is gonna work. And then I start <laughs> making out with it. <laughs> They were made out with cardboard before. It's like actually like really it's cool. It's yeah, hot. it's hot. It's like really hot. So now uh, everyone's uh, in the kitchen talking about going to the beach today. Paige is like, I might go in the ocean today. Like it's wild. And um, they're just like Kyle and Sierra. I'm sorry. Sierra and Wes are sort of like flirting. And Sierra once again gives us this bullshit where she's like, you know what, like as far as I'm concerned, it's like a very flirting, fleeting moment of flirting. And I'm like having fun, but like I'm not like doing a timeline to marriage and all that shit. Like it's the second week in, like we have to live together, okay? They say don't shit where you eat. And I did that before, remember? And we get flashbacks to Austin. And I'm like, I just think that it's amazing how Austin can still cock block from like the past. Like that's how terrible he is. He's just always cock blocking no matter what. Like it's people like Austin who ruin it for people like West. It's just tall people in general, I think, who ruin everything. I think if everybody was short, the world would be nice. I mean, look at something like the Smurfs. They had a lovely life. The only person that was trouble was the tall person, the taller person, Gargamel. Gargamel. Ruined fucking everything, you know? And I think that's the show. In a nutshell, yeah. everybody should be this... short. Of course, we, we would have no ratings. Nobody would watch it, you know? <laughs> we need tall people uh, to prey on short girls who have um, daddy issues. So everyone's getting ready, and uh, Amanda's like, I need to shower, Kyle. I don't want to be the last one, Kyle. And That's he's like, well, you want to get in here with me? Yeah. What'd you say? Shower timing is like Amanda's thing this season. Like, Kyle, you need to shower at the right time. I don't want you to shower at the wrong time, Kyle. That was her thing Kyle. last week. And he's yeah. like, you want to come here and get in the shower with me? It's like, I don't want to be naked next to you. So everyone else is getting ready. There's awkwardness with Carl and Lindsay as they get ready silently in their room. And then Gabby has this really, really good uh, call with her sister, Danielle. And she's like, oh, my God, Danielle. Lindsay and Carl got into a huge fight. And Danielle's like, no. And Gabby's like, mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm. Girl, mm hmm. Wow. Mm hmm. And Gabby's like, well, at the end of the day, the issue with her is that, like, she came in and had all these issues with the girls. I mean, well, that was her own issue until she started shit with Carl for no reason. Like, that was not. So, oh, we're going to deal with that now, I guess. Girl. <laughs> so then Carl's like, all right, let's go. I'm going to get shotgun to Sierra's car. <laughs> so they go to the oh, beach I for fun and games time. Yeah. And Amanda's like, Kyle spends more time with his speakers than he does his wife. And I'm actually on Amanda's side about this because I don't know if I can respect someone who brings large speakers to a public beach. Like, that's just obnoxious. Like, I don't. Well, Kyle's he's brought Amanda. Speakers. Nobody has a problem with that. I mean, all she does everywhere <laughs> she goes is go. <laughs> ah, I mean, which would you prefer? You know, I prefer true. the Pioneer brand myself. <laughs> He is really obsessed with those speakers. So, um, he but brings you're right. Yeah, bringing speakers giant speakers to a public beach to play to blast LMFAO. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> You've got a thing with LMFAO. I don't know. I week. said that last week too. I don't it's know. I don't know why mind. I'm so mad at them. You are pissed at LMFAO. I've seen their wieners. Well, I saw the short ones wiener. It was big. really, yeah, in real life. I did that MTV Spring Break thing right. for Buna Murray in Acapulco or wherever that was. Like. Yeah, Had we started this yet? Or was it, I guess it was probably right before we started Watch What Crap Ends, mm -hmm. right? Or was it around that time? Around that time. And they were doing um they were doing spring break and it was the challenge. They were doing like a challenge thing there. So all those guys were there. 
CT and his hotness was there. Mm. And um, what, who was I talking? Oh, LMFAO were like the special guests or whatever. And so I had to write all the sketches, like the comedy sketches they do between commercial breaks and stuff. And um, yeah, there, there was one where they were naked. <laughs> I wrote one they were naked on the beach because that's how I roll. I'm like, you know, wow. why not? This is my, my casting beach. And that little one has a big one. Wow. Well, no wonder why they got they broke up. Maybe Red Foo just couldn't deal with it. Yeah. So I once saw Red Foo. I think Red Foo used to live near you. I used to see him on, walking on the street by your nice. place. He was a really nice, nice guy. guy. He seems nice. Blue was the one who got into trouble later, right? You I know, I don't like, know. I don't know. I don't he know. I just know they broke the up. Okay. So big, big, um, big. You no, know, that story was so good. I was sorry. I would actually say I was LMFAO. <laughs> sorry, it really didn't go anywhere. All I, I had to it. say was that guy had a big one, and, and no, it was good. Took us to a place. Took us to a beach. All right, hey, um, so uh, I, I need some lotion. Can you get like my back, bro? Yeah, some put lotion on me. Yeah. And now Carl and Danielle are playing very sad football wherein they throw a ball, like they're five feet away from each other throwing a ball back and forth. Hey, Danielle, you throw a better spiral than I do. <laughs> so anybody want to party? Anyone want to party? Not that kind of spiral, Danielle. Okay, come back to the present. <laughs> come back to the present. <laughs> I guess so, when you go through a spiral, you can throw a spiral. Good job. He's talking about how being away from Loverboy for a summer, it's like, it's been so nice to not have all that work pressure. <laughs> you know, like all that stuff I had to do, like, I don't know, like, unpacking soda soda waters and then like yeah. telling people hey want to drink this soda water and then they would like drink it it was so hard yeah like you know like work pressure is like something that i've had to deal with for like three weeks every summer before i get fired so it's just like nice <laughs> to be away from it so difficult i mean that job really <laughs> made me think like god i missed the days i was taking floss from doctor's office to doctor's to dentist's office to dentist's office <laughs> Man, like it was so much pressure having to write a proposal about how I could take on a larger role with more pressure. So it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. She goes, yeah, so what are you doing these days? Are you just looking? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm taking my time a little bit. Like, oh, uh, trying to figure out what I want. You know, reset. Reset a little bit. Because uh, I've been in transition with my career, you know. Leaving Loverboy I thought was the best thing for me. But, uh, you know, like I have to figure out where I'm going next. You know, I'm, I'm gifted at sales. Gifted at sales. <laughs> Uh, and relationships, building yeah. relationships, those are really good. So, yeah. you know, uh, they always say leave them, leave them wanting more. So that's why, like, I'm so good at sales. That's why I think I always get fired because, like, they just want they leave them wanting more sales. So it was great, more life, more life, more mm -hmm. sales. So now Jesse is talking to Kyle, and he's like, um, "Bro, Loverboy has so many flavors. I just can't tell which ones I like." So we're still on this Loverboy commercial <laughs> thing. And then um, Paige is like, um, last night at my club, it was me or at the club, not mine. I don't own it. <laughs> Just in my head. Gross. But it was me, Sierra, Wes, Jesse, Jesse Solomon. And he leans over to me and he's like, oh my God, he put his hand on my knee. And like immediately I was like, you cannot do that. And then I lie down and took a nap. <laughs> it was really but nice. To be fair. It's like the best part of the night, honestly. <laughs> He had condensation on his hand and he put it on my like new Zara pant. And it's like, I paid half off for this and I'm not going to have it ruined with your wet hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you sling it on really thick. I want to be like, you know that she has a boyfriend, right? And Craig was like not going to mess around if someone's coming after his girlfriend. Yeah, he won't like beat somebody up if they're coming after him. Yeah, like Craig's like big and tough. He's so strong. Like, everyone's afraid of Craig. Yeah, like... They call him the pillow guy, but like he'll muffle you to death with a pillow. Like he's totally not afraid. He'll totally go to battle for his woman. Yeah, he's like gladiator, but like with pillows. Have you seen the holes in his walls? Yeah, he will literally punch a wall if he thinks the wall is hitting on me. He's like that. One time I brushed against a wall when I was drunk and Greg stabbed it with a butter knife because he <laughs> thought the wall. <laughs> he maimed himself in my honor. It was hot. I barely remember it just because I browned out. So she's basically, she's like, you know what? If Craig ever told me that a girl touched his leg at a club, I would get my ass on a plane and be down in Charleston in two hours. And then I would be right back because I'm like, ew, I hate this city. I'm not even going to go back there and yell, to yell at Craig. <laughs> get me on a plane so fast that I'd get on the plane and I'd be like, I hate planes. This plane is so stupid. I thought of flying anyway. It's so dangerous. I know. I'd be like, oh my God, I need to yell at Craig, but all these people are not wearing black. It's like gross. And I'm going to go back to New York City now. 
<laughs> so, uh, so uh, then uh, they're dancing and they're shotgunning lever boys, lol. And Lindsay's talking to Danielle, and she's like, um, when we went online, she said there was one guy you were talking to, and then I was like, can we get the check, please? And then I waited for you to pay it, but then you didn't. That was hilarious. Um, I think you were talking about a guy, were you? I forgot. We did go to lunch, right, Danielle? Your yeah, name is... there's like a couple of guys I've been talking to. I mean, I am fed, okay? I went to the oh, Sunday lounge, so and I got sent, okay? But the debauchery like... happened. When she said, I've been fed, okay? And then she like leans out her lover boy for a cheers and Lindsay's like, um, clink? <laughs> I don't know if I can support this cringe right now, but sure. Send it. Send it. <laughs> Please come to the Send It Lounge. The Send so, It Lounge is open for business for all night debauchery, I suppose. So then West is talking to Carl about Lindsay and nothing's resolved, guys. So then we cut back and Danielle's like, um, yeah, well, I had like a really good conversation with Carl. Like we partied, like, but like alcohol free, which is cool, but like he could still send it. Just like sober send it, you know? So it was like a sober send. It was really good. Yeah, it's like, but, you know, like he, I, th I think he likes you. And she's like, um, well, he doesn't know what he wants to do after a year. And like he's been trying to figure it out. Um, but like, come on. Like uh, this year, I leaned into Lindsay, the influencer. Her, and I made so much money from like brand deals and campaigns and you know it's basically similar to what Paige does. I was like uh oh dun yeah. dun dun competition influencer but the, competition. The difference is like like Paige does fashion but like for me like I hold up burgers so like that was like my influence I'm like a burger influencer because they have this picture of Lindsay just holding a burger <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. suddenly like there are so many less cows in the world because like I've really turned people on to be fun. Yeah, so like smash that like button for a smash burger. <laughs> like and subscribe, you stupid cokeheads. <laughs> like Lindsay. So then Lindsay, this was hilarious to me because Lindsay, this topic about Carl's job clearly exhausts her. So she's like, well, since Carl quit Leroy last summer, we've been trying to figure out what he's into. And she's like still trying to be like optimistic, but she's very worn out by this. You know, he like talked at one point about wanting to start a podcast, so we got a podcast equipment which was great and i had to move my free burgers out of the way so he could put up a microphone that was great and he always talks about how he like went to school for tv and film production and he wants to be a motivational speaker and yeah i'm like okay so there's a few things you need to figure out there <laughs> not going crazy at all and then she's talking about how they hired a career coach for him and it cost twenty thousand dollars for six months for this career coach and he still doesn't know what he wants to do listen don't date someone who's going to Uber. <laughs> Drive sorry. Uber. I'm sorry. Drive there are Uber. so many flags here. Get out of this relationship immediately. Don't marry someone yeah. without a job. Do not marry someone who spends $20,000 of presumably your money on a career coach. No. Carl's a good guy. Carl's working really hard on himself. He needs to do that on his own time until he's yeah. ready. You can't make somebody jump into a relation. And maybe he's never gonna be ready. Not everybody is like a huge career person and that's okay too, you know? That's okay, but like he needs to figure, he's figuring out his shit and she needs to like let him figure, I'm not, it's not even like she needs to let him. She should do something else while he figures it out because she needs someone who, who knows where they're going in life. Yeah, you know, maybe he doesn't have any ambition. Maybe he's like a family guy. He doesn't have ambitions for a job, but maybe he'll be like a great dad, a stay-at-home dad or whatever. And, but Lindsay's not going to want that. I mean, she says it with no, basically says it in this episode. She says it. And so then meanwhile, Lindsay's like, so, by the way, this was huge progress for Lindsay asking Danielle questions. In the middle of while in the middle of Lindsay being talking about herself, she stops to ask Danielle questions, which by the way, now that I say it out loud, has there ever been a worse omen for this relationship that Lindsay doesn't even want to talk about it? <laughs> That's bad. So Lindsay's like, so by the way, are you are you gonna date a chef again? And Danielle's like, no. I think I want a musician as my next person. Danielle. I can't. <laughs> Jesus, why don't you just go for a heroin dealer? I mean <laughs> Danielle. Like, I've just started I've decided to start just writing letters to guys in jail. That's my <laughs> You know what? I want to, you know what, you know would be great? Someone who works in the record industry. Um, no. Wow. The show no. where zero people learn their lessons, okay? No. no one has ever learned their lesson on this show. 
<laughs> Danielle, Danielle. Um, yeah, not, there's like no upside to that. None whatsoever. So Lindsay's like, well, I know a musician and he's coming to my wedding and you have an RSVP to my wedding. And Danielle's like, oh my God, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Cause like the reason I haven't like RSVP is cause I've been sending it. Yeah, I've got, I've got like a line of guys out my door. So I'm like, send it, send it. I've got like a send it stamp. <laughs> so I'm just like, send it, send it. Ah, I'll RSVP at some point, right? Too busy, send it. So she's like, I just wanted to make sure you really want me there, Lindsay. She's like, um, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to have someone that we can all laugh at. So she's like, okay. So um, Danielle's basically like, yeah, no, Lindsay and I are off a great start. Everything's like we're rebuilding. Everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. So then there's like some other stuff. Wes and Paige are like, I'm look at the, at the, at the waves and then Sierra and, Jesse are just like also like chatting or whatever. And Paige is like, by the way, West, you are like fitting in seamlessly. Like, I feel like we're like friends for life. Like, please tell me you enjoy a good half off sale. He's like, yeah, I would be heartbroken if we weren't friends for life. Yeah. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so glad when a short person comes into the house because you know they're well intentioned. <laughs> so then Carl and Lindsay have their talk finally. And he's like, um, you want to talk? Like, look. <sighs> This reminds me of when we had pictures taken on the beach after we got yeah. engaged. So yeah, yeah. Let's remember that. Let's remember the good times. Let's remember yeah. the good times where we basically sold pictures yeah. of us getting engaged because you're an Tell influencer me. now. I'm so proud of you. So proud Hold of on you. one second. Um, do you mind if instead of yeah. this blanket that we're sitting yeah. on that we replace it with like several hamburger buns? Because I kind of got them for free. All right, babe. You're yeah, the meat in my soft. bun. All right? You're, oh. the, you're like the meat in my bun. Really? So I just want to say that. Wow. You know, like sometimes there are hinds to climb, but um, you know, you're in a pickle if you uh, if you don't let us find our love, right? Wow, you know, finding a love like this is so rare <laughs> that you have to make sure that everything you do is well done. Uh... <laughs> All right, well, I just want to talk about this morning because like I needed a moment to get my head in order, you know, because um, basically I just like, my brain was ground. You know what I mean? And <laughs> it wasn't until it was like properly seasoned and uh, excellently mixed and then turned into a smash burger that it really worked out. So I'd like to thank you for your guidance in that. You Burger King. Yeah, and by the way, like great work, like working towards your exercise goals. I would have to judge that right now you're probably like 90% meat, 10% fat. So congratulations on that ratio. <laughs> so he's like, I love you so much. I uh, just like, I know I had some anxiety this weekend. You had some anxiety this weekend. Like we both had anxiety, but I was just trying to comfort you. So, and she's like, um, in those moments, like I'm just understanding, I'm not understanding where your like moon even came from last night because like you were so snappy and aggressive and rune and mean. And he doesn't really deny it. So right. I'm confused. But he's by this show. Like I think conflict. they need to have car. They need to have at least cam, car cam, like a below deck. You know, there needs to be a producer. In, there should be a producer in there with their phone. You know, so, yeah. Because now we have a whole season that is hinging on this moment. What happened in that car? Because Carl, Kyle's like, well, you needed a witness for last night, bro. Like he says that later, and he's going to be the witness, or he said it already. I don't remember, but he's going to be the witness to prove what an asshole Lindsay is. But Carl's not really denying that he was being an asshole. I just want to know what happened, you know? He, but him not denying it doesn't mean anything because Carl also hates conflict and he wants to make things smooth and he wants to resolve things. So even though he could say, oh, yeah, well, I wasn't being a dick. You were the one who's reading into what I was saying. He's going to do, like, he's going to follow the, the, the lowest path of resistance in order to get to where this conversation is. Right, and I feel like that's the obvious choice for us to believe as an audience is where they're saying okay Lindsay's obviously being crazy she got really defensive because she was paranoid about the girls and all carl was trying to do was say i support you and i don't i just i don't know we don't know what it was and it's making me crazy because everything hinges on this and i have trouble that if someone was telling me you were so vicious to me and so mean and so terrible that i wouldn't say but i wasn't i was literally just saying i'm here for you yeah 
Well, you know? you know what? You made those comments last night, and it like it like hurts to hear. I like, are you on drugs and this and that though? And like, it just like seemed like you came from like a place where you thought I was like lying to you and saying like I'm not sober, but you were not sober. So yeah, but I get I have like PTSD from like old Carl sometimes because like old Carl like to me came out last night and didn't even have a burger, and I'm trying to search to like where it came from and why, and I'm like asking every question in the book to find out why. Yeah, and um, she's like, I think she lays it out pretty good here, where she's like, you know, I know that Carl, and I saw that Carl, and where is that coming from? And he just kind of, you know, moves past it. He's like, well, oh, uh, you know, like, I'm scared of old Carl, too. You know what I mean? Like, old Carl was, like, selling laughing gas to Dennis. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want you to feel like that, you know? But, like, I have emotions, too, you know? I mean, this is the last summer before we get married. Like, who knows what, what's going to happen next summer? Like, m marriage? Then maybe a baby or something? Like, who knows where we're going to even be living? So, like, this is, like, the last chance. Like, we have to start on a fresh foot. You know what I mean? And she's like... Okay, that's fair. <laughs> great. So, uh, can we have like a great weekend? Yeah. Okay. Love you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> Let's guess. Whoa, whoa. You just gave me a tongue. Wow. Yeah. And here's a thing about taking sides in a couple like this. At the end of the day, they're always going to end up making out. <laughs> if you're going to be always. wrong. I think even now that they have gone through all of this drama. And they're trying to make their own scandal thing or whatever. I think still they will have moments where they're just like, let's have a makeout weekend, you know? Yeah. So now it's time to pick up all the trash and everything and clean up. And they're all going to go back to the house. And um, Amanda's like, you know, like, oh, my God, my dogs. Do you hear them? They're like barking. Puppies. Yes, come on in. She's just so happy to not have to have. She's excited to have an excuse to not talk to Kyle. She can just lavish her attention onto these dogs. <laughs> um, so then Carl and Lindsay are back at like, hey, babe. Hey, babe. You want to take a shower, babe? Y'all want to take a shower, babe, babe, babe. babe. You, you're dirty right now, babe. You need to take a shower. Babe. Yeah, that was like a really good shower. <sighs> so then they're playing like ns, 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 dance music. And then it's just like West calmly walking around his room, changing his shirt. <laughs> yeah. The music's a little misplaced. And then Kyle puts on this yellow shirt and yellow shorts matching outfit with his <laughs> his mullet. He is so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And he looks in the mirror, he's like, I love this for me. Yeah, it's very Tweety Bird. Oh, uh, hey babe, you're doing a great job cutting stuff in the kitchen. Yeah, you're doing a great job, Liz. Wow, the way you just like slice that vegetable, like you did great, you did great, babe. I was thinking like maybe I can start like a job where I just like cheerlead for people chopping vegetables in the kitchen. What do you think, babe? This is what we do in the couple. Like, you go to work and then chop things after. And I go, great job, babe. <laughs> She's like, Thanks. I'm a chop -ovational speaker. <laughs> so she, he goes out with one group and she stays with the other group to cook. And um, Danielle, Amanda, Carl, West, and Sierra are going to a restaurant. So she's like, oh, my God, we're all dressed different from each other. We're, like, dressed for the Hamptons. And you guys, and man's like, I'm dressed up for, like, Club Club. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have a virgin mojito, please. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Amanda, are you missing Kyle and the dogs? Ha. She's like, and she's no. like, um, no. So then we cut back to the other group in the kitchen, and Gabby's like, oh my god, is this how people feel on Thanksgiving? Because like, I'm over this. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, what we should do is we should go like meet the, the group out. Like we don't give them a chance to come out. We just go out. We like we know when we send it, we'll send ourselves out. Let's do that. Yeah. So he turns on his fog machine. Um, I just feel I don't know. Kyle, you know Kyle's a good a good boy, but um, <laughs> he fills me with sadness. <laughs> There's, just, there's something about that. Sad sometimes. The the fog machine and the speakers. I think Club Send It is just a very depressing concept on this show. Like it's just really it's, one of the saddest things. I feel like he and Danielle are just clinging to the last vestiges of something. I don't know. I know youth. I don't know what it is, but it's just clinging. You know. And it's yeah. uh, it makes me sad. Okay, so restaurant. So West is like, guys, does anyone know why cheersing was invented? And Sierra was like, yeah, because if your enemy poisoned you, you had to like clink some of your drink in their glass, because then you both have to drink each other's thing. And he's like, oh my god, she knew that. I learned that in Milwaukee. My parents went there. 
uh, for their anniversary. They pretty much ignored me the whole time. But I got to go still, and I heard that story, and no one's ever heard it besides me. It's so hot. <laughs> so hot. Yeah. And Sierra's like, yeah. Hi, I'm Sierra. Nice to meet you. I know all sorts of anecdotes. Amazing. So then we go back to the house. I don't trust and- Sierra in this relationship. I think she's going to hurt West. She is going and West to, West is just a sweaty, little, innocent person, you know? He um, is. Sweet West. Although I'm a little concerned because at the beach day, he's, he told us that he has a little baby crush on Sierra. And when people talk about, anytime someone says, I have a little baby crush, or I have a kindergarten crush on someone, that's like fuckboy talk. So that was my first true red flag on West. But other than that, love him. Love his addition to the show. Um... I just think she's going to hurt his feelings. I'm getting like douchey vibes from her. Like she's faking it. She is. She's not into him whatsoever. He's not tall enough. Everything she talks about, like I've had funny. I don't need funny again. You're the, she, what she's really saying is I want tall. I don't care what the personality is. It could literally be a terrorist. I just want tall. Yeah. Um, well, I hope that's not the case, but I think it, it is. is. So then, um, Paige is like, okay, let's play a game. Um, we're going to play celebrity, but, um, you know, obviously like Lindsay's here, so we're going to have to change the name. We're just going to call it, um, onion chopper. Okay. <laughs> okay. So name, I'm going to put a post-it on your head and you're going to name a person at the restaurant and we're going to have to guess who it is. And Carl's like, okay, he's got Sierra on his forehead. He goes, am I a bitch? And Paige is like, yes. <laughs> like, that doesn't really narrow it down. Okay. Do I have perfectly sized melons? They're like, yes. He's like, Amanda. They're like, no. Um, and, Although that's uh, a correct answer, but you are on a TV show. I mean, I think that's like a prerequisite for this show. So Jess is like, um, are my vibes? Oh, Jesse. Jesse's like, are my vibes a uh, level nine or above? And they're like, no. <laughs> no. Carl goes, I think your vibes are like a two or below. And Paige goes, yeah, actually, like, I feel like we should check your hemoglobin levels. <laughs> and he goes, I'm Amanda. I'm Amanda. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I'm Amanda. I'm Amanda. Okay, wait a second. All right. How about me? Am I about 75 years old and think uh, I'm accomplished because I've uh, been, uh, I've sold a few burgers for White Castle? Am I Lindsay? Am I Lindsay? <laughs> Uh, Lindsay's like, shut up, Paige. What do you want to eat right now? A burger. Worked it. It worked. <laughs> She's got it. I'll give her that. So Wes goes to the bathroom at the restaurant, and Amanda's like, Wally's gone. Sierra, you guys are like so cute together. <laughs> You know, you guys, you guys know I'm into a fun personality. I mean, look at my personality. It's literally probably the most fun personality on Bravo. Am I right? But I'm a slow burn. You know, it's only the second weekend. He's also not tall, not tall at all. She's worked on it. Don't you think her personality? She I has. Think she's That's... come back this year where she's definitely had some kind of media training or she's just finally comfortable well, on camera or something. She's like more fun than usual. She has worked on her personality and she has blossomed over the years, but she's still, I would not call one of the most magnetic people we have on screen. She's beautiful. She seems very nice and very lovely. I would not say that she's incredibly compelling. I love that she can't tell the difference between an oven and a microwave. I think that's a great addition to her. <laughs> that's an important part of being that's on a Summer House cast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I remember going to their panel at BravoCon and just literally walking out. I mean, I walked out of every panel because they're boring, but especially theirs. And it wasn't really just her. It was the whole vibe of it. I, I remember telling you, these are a bunch of fundamentally uninteresting people. Like, I cannot believe you. You have to watch. You watch something like that and then you watch the show and you think, wow, there really is magic in editing. There are people mm-hmm. who make something out of literally nothing and good for them. They're doing great yeah. over there. Let's raise our glass to the editors, shall we? Okay, so the dog barks. Uh, oh, so Wes right. comes back and they're pretending, you know, not even pretending they weren't talking about him. And Carl's like, oh, cloudy with a chance of eavesdropping. Ha, <laughs> 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 ha, Your weather forecast looks great, by the way. Ha, <laughs> ha. So now um, they are back at the house. They're eating dinner and there was a, t- <laughs> there's a dog that's outside. And it's at the, at the door, like, I'm ready to come back in. And like, oh my God. We forgot that there was a dog here. Oh my God, Amanda's gonna literally kill us. Like, where's the other dog? <laughs> How'd that dog get out there? And Kyle's like, oh, uh, I think someone left the door open. So he's now like very nervous, 
He's like, I guess I should probably find this other dog. Otherwise, Amanda will literally kill me. And he's walking around the house wasted. So he's like, oh, I have all these dogs in my ear. Where are the dogs? Who let the dog out? It's bullshit, guys. <laughs> and he goes outside Riz, to look for the dog. Riz, he's just, he's just Riz. Riz. the dog. <laughs> and the music, the drama starts. And he's it's like, scary oh my music. God. He can't find Riz. the dog. And so he comes back in. He's like, oh my God, come on. Can anybody help me? Come on. I didn't get a tick of my dick in the woods for nothing. Because of course then, that's what Carl's thinking of. The minute he goes outside, he's like, I should pee out here. I didn't get any tick on my dick. <laughs> like, come on, help me. So the music is like very intense. And I was even thinking like, shit, this dog may have died. Like this dog may have run away. This is going to be an issue. And then Lindsay just goes upstairs and Reese is just in the room. Oh, it's right here, actually. And the music just goes. Rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> so then we cut back, and Amanda's like, "Oh my god, can we talk about how amazing it is that we have Carl here tonight? He never gets away from Lindsay because she's so mean and controlling." Am I right, guys? Like Amanda's always like poking, you know. But you she were is. the one who spent last season losing your fucking mind over Kyle being out too late, or was that the season before? <laughs> Where she it's just, just was having a, a breakdown and voicemailing him like 30 times in a row. She's just like a Niagara Falls of misery. So Carl is like, well, yeah, well, last night, like, Lindsay and I, we do spend, like, a lot of time together. And, like, last night, we were just, like, kind of dismissing each other, like, cloudy with a chance of dismissal, right? <laughs> but she was, like, she felt like I was dismissing her, which is funny because she was actually dismissing me. But, like, I, but like you know, my perspective doesn't really matter. So it's just, like, uh, you know. Well, this so is, like, like, really upsetting. More, more life. I was, like, more is life. this, like, cloudy with a chance of being dismissed? And she was, like, do you mean cloudy with a chance of meatballs? Or do you mean cloudy with a chance of burgers? Because, like. <laughs> burgers are the flat meatball and i was like no the meatballs are balls because they're like yeah meat. and then she wouldn't well, speak to me so like i'm not really sure what to do with that <sighs> and i like literally showed her the book and i was like look there are literally hamburgers in this book as clouds and like the meatballs are a totally different entity and like you can't have cloudy with a chance of meatballs like with the burgers because it's different like the burgers are the clouds do you like understand these two concepts and she was like no she like would not hear it from me it's like why don't you support me and i was like why do you smash meatballs <laughs> she thought I was being like dismissive of her and she said it's just a hamburger and not a meatball and it was like we went around in a loop it was like awful you know but like I get it I love her so Sierra's like so how are you supposed to maintain this in the long term like being in a relationship with someone who has drinks and then a tendency to be kind of obnoxious and rude when she's drinking <laughs> Just puts it all out there. <laughs> and the girl's like, yeah, well, I think she's gotten, like, better. Like, now when she drinks, she just accuses me of being uncooked, which is, like, totally fine. And, like, we go to couples therapy. And, like, it's, like, hard sometimes. But, like, I will say, like, you know, we always do come back together unless coming back together was work. In which case, you know, I quit. <laughs> and Danielle's getting really uncomfortable and making big, a big show of, like, being uncomfortable that they're talking about her now best friend again. Lindsay, because she's like, I'm going to have to go tattletale on all these people. So then we go back to the kitchen and uh, Gabby and Lindsay are talking and Gabby's like, oh my God, how did the conversation with Danielle go? <gasps> and like a page, like you and Lindsay haven't talked either. And last time you guys talked, it was like in April. That did not go well. I called my sister and I was like, you will not believe what just happened. And she was like, girl. And I was like, girl. She was like, girl. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. I was crazy, you guys. It was nuts. <laughs> For three hours. And so um, we see the clip of Paige being like, you're fucking nuts. And she's like, well, I'd rather be nuts and boring. So we come back and Paige's like, yeah, well, that's just like me and Lindsay, though. You know, it's like when you have a crazy old grandma. And Lindsay's like, yeah, but like, I don't like that that's like our thing, you know? Like, it doesn't have to be that way. And Gabby's like, will that work for you? She's like, um, I don't know. Why are we talking? How did I end up in a room with Lindsay? <laughs> and Lindsay's <laughs> like, um, I think that you thought that I've done stuff in the past that I haven't done before. And then we get a clip of Paige at the reunion going, oh, you didn't write an article in about Amanda's wedding as an anonymous source. You did. You did. And you said Craig was kicked out of Kyle and Amanda's wedding. Sources claim sources. Mm -hmm. And then we cut back and Lindsay's like, um, you think I leaked a story about Craig? Yeah. <laughs> And it was Danielle. I died laughing. I was laughing so hard. I can't believe this show can still get to me.
Every time I'm like, this show's stupid. All they're going to do is sit around and drink all summer. I hate this show now. It just takes a moment like this to remind me I'm still in love, guys. Still in love. love so Paige is, like, Paige is like, oh, my God. And then she's like, you know what? She should have absolutely spoken up and said, you can just like Lindsay for X, Y, Z reasons, like her personality, her attitude, her roots, her personality, her hair, her clothes, her personality. But I am guilty of the story planting. Yeah, that wasn't right. Also, do we need this many cutting boards? <laughs> like, how many cutting boards does this house have? We don't even have a full size onion here, uh, full size oven here. How do we have 19 cutting boards? <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> no, I didn't. There, Lindsay was doing the dishes, and there were like four or five huge cutting boards behind her, like leaning up, drying off. I was like, how many did you guys use? You don't need every cutting board in the house. I'm, well, I'm a you... burger maker now, so. <laughs> yeah, this is from Bear Burger. Um, <laughs> uh, Paige, why are you sticking that cutting board to my forehead? We're playing another game. We're going to put down the name of um, senior citizens on each other's cutting boards and put them on our foreheads. And we have to guess who they are. <laughs> Okay, you have Jessica Tandy. I have like I have you. Oops, sorry. Uh, Twinsies. <laughs> um. So Paige is like, um. I think that Lindsay is telling me this because she wants me to turn against Danielle and then tell all the girls to turn against Danielle, which isn't really how I would personally go about it. But Lindsay doesn't really know any other way, and she's making an effort. So I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Lindsay is using her evil in my aid. So I'm with it. She's learning. Yeah. So uh, so, so Lindsay and Paige do like a little handshake. And now, the, now everyone goes out. They meet out and they come back. And um, it looks like everyone's going to just like come back and just like go to sleep. But then the fog machine goes on. Like the, the fog machine's on. And then the speakers are on. And, um, you know, it's like late night hijinks. And Lindsay's wasted. She's like, oh, so Carl, um, I had a good night. I made progress. I totally saddled on Danielle. And he's like, wow, send that. And so they make out. They're totally in love. It's like such an evil couple. Like, yeah, I good know. job, babe. Good job betraying Danielle. Let's bone. Uh, so, um, so, and then they're like, Jesse's like really mad at Gabby. He's like, "You blew my five star Uber rating." She's like, what? <laughs> "Apparently had something so to do with too. the car." Like, yeah. There was Danielle comes the in mad at them, and he's like, "I can't believe you just blew my five star rating." <laughs> I've gotten in trouble with my friend for that too, because I opened nachos in the car and I got yelled at. She's like, "Ronnie, this is my Uber. <laughs> Kill my rating." Sorry. So then, um, apparently, Gabby could. She's like, I couldn't get out of the car. And Danielle's like, You couldn't get out of the vehicle. She goes, No, we couldn't get in the gate. Danielle. She goes, The gate was open. <laughs> oh. So the fog machine is whirring to life, and um, <laughs> and then the fire alarm, of course, starts to, starts to go off. Like the smoke alarm is like annoying everyone. Amanda's just like lying in the bed with the dog. She just wants to be with the dog. She does not want to be married to Kyle anymore. And then uh, Jesse, Kyle and, Kyle and Wes are like lying on Wes's bed. And then Jesse comes in just like farts on top of their face. He squats on top of them and then farts in their faces, which is interesting yeah. after our Vanderpump Rules recap this week. It's just a farty kind of a week in our recaps. Big farts. So then um, it's in the morning. Wes and Kyle go to bed together and they wake up in the morning. <laughs> and Wes like is cuddling Kyle. He's got his leg over Kyle. <laughs> They're spooning in bed in the morning. It is so cute. <sighs> okay, so then Amanda's like, when do you fall asleep, Kyle? It's like, so then um, Carl kisses Lindsay awa awake. It's time to go back to the city or whatever. And Sierra's flirting with West. And she's like, want to take my bags down? He's like, yeah, what's your week like? You're busy Thursday. She's like, um, are you saying I'm busy Thursday? It's on a date night? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm going to get you car service because I know you like that. <laughs> That's like a good big gesture. I'm sorry, so but you know who never sent a car for her? Austin. Bad move. That's true. She, she That's doesn't true. want a guy who's going to send a car for her. She's full of shit. Nope. She so, wants a guy that would like try to run over her and be like, she, he yeah, didn't she, mean she, it, y'all. She wants a guy who's going to walk in the restaurant first before her. So uh, now they leave. They go back to the city, and uh, Paige is making a smoothie, and she's like, hey, um, Amanda, if you have anything important to say, say it to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear. 
We're on the top of the world. We're unstoppable. And West is sweating. I love when they play like really positive music while someone is just struggling their way through the city. West is just, he's wearing the see-through shirt and he's, he's got that, I don't know, he looks like he's 40 if a day and he's got that 16-year-old boy hair, you know? It's just so yeah. bad and he's sweating and... Um, Sierra comes in the big, he got her an Uber black. I mean, it's, he got her one of the huge SUVs. So he yeah. really went all out for this one. And, she really um, did. He tells us. He got her the like, tallest no. car they have. <laughs> he's just trying to get like tall energy from vehicles. He actually really should have gotten a really a short, small car. So when she gets out, he proportionally seems much taller. So he is like, you know, I've been on a zillion dates in New York city, but like, Obviously, this one, the stakes are high. Like, if you have a bad date with a girl on Hinge, you never see them again. But, like, this one, I'm going to see her, like, 900,000 more times. At which point, Jordan showed up. I was like, actually, funny story. As the former number one bachelor on Hinge, I have to say that, like, all the people I've ever gone on dates with, I saw them multiple times because we all had sex in a giant room together. And just before I ejaculated on their faces, I suddenly had to run out of the room and go to the hospital. True story. <laughs> Turned out because Meredith Ber Meredith Baxter Bernie was fingering my asshole and she <laughs> lost a push on nail up there. I had to go get it taken out of the hospital and then every single nurse lined up to fuck me because they heard Hinge's most popular bachelor was in there. It was amazing. My dick is exhausted. <laughs> oh, Jordan. I yeah. wonder what Jordan's up to these days. We miss you, buddy. <laughs> Falling out of a bed because I got such an intense blowjob. That's what I'm up to. And you know what else is up? My penis because I never wound up coming. Uh, so Sierra's like, nice. You brought your nipples out for dinner. <clears throat> and he's like, haha, you like that? Check. Uh, you're sweating a lot. You nervous? <laughs> And he's just red and sweating, which I get because, you know, I've had that issue. And uh, so he says something which I think is very relatable to all of us where he goes, do you like Mezcal? Because I always think I want a Mezcal, but then I get one and I really hate it. Isn't that relatable? Mezcal's disgusting. I love Mezcal, oh, so it's not relatable on. to me, and I stand by it. Okay, things I like that I see on this show. Mezcal and Kias. Shame on you. Not yeah. for the Kia part. Yeah. Well, um, so they're just, they talk, and, you know, she was a Girl Scout. She was in Girl Scouts. She, she was in Girl Scouts, and... You know, they, they talk. Yeah, well, <laughs> they have a he's date. super impressed because he guessed that she does not have like any outdoorsiness about her. I, wow, like people I never in New York guessed. are always trying to like compete. It's like Luke. You know, that was the Luke vibe. Like, I'm so outdoorsy. Um, and I live in New York City, but like I'm obsessed with like chopping wood. You know, yeah. there's always that type. And Sierra's like, um, excuse me, I may live in New York City, but I was like a top climber. I, I hiked was, in multiple she, states. Yeah, because he he was like, because he's like, what's your outdoors like? And he he uh, he guesses that she was in the Girl Scouts for two years, but she was in it for twelve years or K through twelve, I should say. So um, then he loves. Uh, she's like, what's a fun fact? Because I love deviled eggs, which I don't think is a fun fact. I think like a lot of people love deviled eggs. Well, he doesn't have any fun facts. I mean, he already he blew his wad with like the travel to every state with my parents. But he was just my saying that because they ordered the deviled rodeo. eggs, so he was about to eat a deviled egg. So oh, yeah. that's a man who you could tell how things. much I was really paying attention during this scene. Well, it's just <laughs> I was like they're on a date. I don't know. It was not interesting to me. One thing about this show and these shows, Winter House and this one, they have to fuck each other. It's an awkward thing. It's like a bachelor setup. Like they have to. The whole goal of being on the show is kind of human trafficky in a way it's like your cast but you better find someone to fuck or you're out of here you know they've got that kind of vibe to it so watching people try to fake that they like each other just to stay on tv west i'm kind of buying it because he just wants to be accepted but sierra we've seen sierra do this with how many people <laughs> she's never into it i mean she's just so above it all and i don't mean she feels like she's above it all i mean she's literally above it all she's so gorgeous she's so smart and she has like a real career so she's always bored with the losers they pair her up with but it's like here here we go let's watch another season of sierra trying to pretend that she will ever care for any of these idiots well but now she actually is paired with someone who seems pretty great but she's gone on so many dates and been around so many losers that her guard is so up that she's not even gonna give this non-tall person a chance you know and then she also has her thing where they have to be tall 
Uh, whether she wants to admit it or not, that's her thing. So now we go to another date. Lindsay and Carl. They're going to go on a little date date lunch. Um, and, uh, you know, she's... Uh, Here's why I take Lindsay's bar. side on everything. She cannot fake it. Lindsay can't fake anything. She has to be on. Like, it's not even honest. She literally... I think it's like some kind of a disorder, actually. <laughs> I don't even think it's I don't even think it's necessarily a good quality. But Carl is so good at just being like, hey, I just wanted to bring you to like sober bar. Amazing. Isn't this amazing? Look at that lady's eyebrows. Love her. Sober bar. So I just wanted to be be here with you because I love you and like talk about my future. And Lindsay's like, this is stupid. <laughs> I know she's far stupid and you're a loser. So like she, he's trying to have this romantic scene to like, look, we're totally into each other. And she's like, I'm going to kill you if you don't get a job. Like she can't fake it. So I believe Lindsay. So uh, I wanted to talk like her stuff and like where I'm going my next phase. And like, I've been like really relishing that like, I don't have to have like a nine to five or, you know, nine to five to nine to Four, or like a nine to eleven. Two to, four. <laughs> two to four would be bad. One, two to two thirty, not great either. I'm not gonna lie. Oh. Just like glad I don't have to do five minutes of work every day. And it's, so it's, all right. it's been great. It's been great. <laughs> it's been really like been loving your uh, spending time in this uh, sober bar. Uh, yeah. Lindsay, you want to order something without alcohol? She's like, um, yeah, <laughs> I've been out running influencer errands like Paige. So, um, hey bartender, I'll try whatever you want to give me, um, except for your eyebrows. You can keep those. She's like, all right, kid, here's a virgin mark. (laughs) Give me your strongest drink. That was a joke. They're all weak. Um, So she's like, so, Carl, what do you want to do? Because you say you want to do stuff, but there's not a lot of movement. (laughs) Um, But do we do it? Sort of like not a lot of movement between that bartender's hand and the bottle of vodka I brought in to help this sad bar. And she goes, um, like, I mean, I'm so attracted to, like, you know, drive and determination. Like, let's go to the bathroom right now. And he goes, oh, you want to go to the bathroom right now? She goes, no, not at this point. Carl, she just said, what are you going to do with your life? I'm attracted to drive and determination. You're not doing anything. <laughs> That's the point. Are you paying You're attention? Literally sitting at a bar. And she's like, no, I don't want to go to the bathroom right now. So he's like, well, at some point, the alarm will sound. Yeah, well, guess what? It's like sounding for me. And listen, I could always reopen my PR firm and like take, you know, like, but like if I'm going to be like taking care of children, like I've got to be realistic with my time. I can only like take on so many burger clients at a moment. So like, I'm going to need you to help out a little bit. Yeah, she's like, I would be more comfortable personally if there was like a timeline. And he's like, oh, well, by the end of the summer, like, I should know where I'm going. <laughs> I mean, I just want to be, uh, I want to be a voice for things uh, that I've been through, you know? So I'm thinking a sports bar with no alcohol. A sober sports bar. She looks at him like, I know you are sober right now, but you must be high to come up with that idea. <laughs> like, like, what? It's and like, the is there is an just... idea that Cocaine Carl did not come up with? And for him to say, I want to be a voice for things I've been through, you'd think that he's going to do, like, write a book or, like, go and do speak about it or, or like, do some nonprofit stuff. <laughs> I'm going to open up a sports bar with no alcohol. Uh, no. Literally, that's called going to, like, a pizza parlor or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, it's not going to work. Also, I think it's rough focusing so much on the – sober part of it you know what i mean like i'm gonna do something that's all so we have to go to a bar but it's a sober bar because you're still trying to replace the alcohol and i know from my just my experience you can't replace it there's nothing to replace it unfortunately it's just it's always there and you can't you can't have it you're not letting yourself have it you can't just be like i'm gonna go to a bar and it's gonna be the same thing but it's not a bar no there's not there is no such thing you know, you just do other, you have to find other things to do. It's It worries me and it worries her too for different reasons and hers are monetary. She's like, hi, we have, um, uh, we're married now, Kia, and like a $13,000 a month apartment, Carl. Isn't that how yeah. much our apartment was last year? It's a lot. I kind of feel like. It's a lot and we're not spending money on renting you a fucking bar in New York City. Are you fucking crazy, Carl? I kind of, I mean, I just feel bad. I mean, if he went to. It sounds like he went to the communications school at Syracuse, which is one of the top in the nation. And if he went through that program, 
and you're a celebrity and you have podcasting equipment, but you can't even get the ball rolling on a podcast. And like when you could probably get a deal with any of these networks just because of who you are and you have a story to tell and you can't even do that. That's very concerning, I think. Very, very yeah. concerning. <laughs> uh, just press record. And so she's like, Marcy well, Pippen can do it. You could do it, Carl. Come on. So he's like, there's a sports bar, no alcohol. And she's like, um, and he goes, well, like, there's a lot of interesting things in that world. And she's, um, listen, I don't know about brick and mortar. And he's like, exactly, it's risky. She's like, um, yeah, I'm going to say no to that because I've been in hospitality, like, my entire life, representing every lounge, restaurant, bar, taco contract. And I'm telling you, I do not want that in our future family. Okay? And he's like, oh, she's just shitting all over my dreams. Like, she doesn't want to invest all of our money into yeah. a bar without booze it's crazy i actually really liked that Lindsay was didn't even entertain this wasn't even like oh cool that's a nice thing. she just was like uh-uh nope not with my not with our assets no no we're starting a family i'm not having you open up like in new york city a sober a sober sports bar okay. well it's hard not to feel for carl right because carl's doing a lot to carl's making a huge effort in his life you know and so it sucks to see his dreams get shit on, but like, I don't know, get He's better dreams. Lost. <laughs> he, he just, he, it's sad he doesn't know what, to, dream he, doesn't that's know what he wants to be. Yeah, you know? but he's never known. And a lot of times, look, not everybody's gonna have a huge direction in their life, but you still have to do something. I don't think that many people get to just be like, well, I'm not gonna do anything. I don't want to, I'm with somebody. They can let me do something. I'm just gonna think about it. Well, you still have to have a job. Have a job while you're thinking about it. That's the thing is that everyone, I feel like, especially on these shows, I feel like on Bravo, there's like this pressure to everyone to be Bethany Frankel in, in the best sense of Bethany Frankel into like that you have a brand that you are going to you know, push on, you're going to use this platform, use this platform while you have it. I think there's like a huge amount of pressure, which is why you see these people floundering and falling over themselves to be like, um, here is an all natural spray that you can make doorknobs shinier on and you can buy it now and they're all trying to be these entrepreneurs and not everyone is an entrepreneur just work a retail get a retail job answer something on craigslist go on to monster.com go on zip recruiter just like take a job get a job yeah. a regular job a it doesn't you don't have to be the next bill gates and from there you will maybe find what you're interested in I don't right. know. I think. Um, we know I what's know, happening with people. this couple. And then we see in the previews where she says something like, oh, my God, you're just like Sandoval, which I think is so funny that she's trying to turn her whole story for this year into another Scandoval type situation. <laughs> and she's even evoked Ariana's name at in the first episode. And then they evoke it again later while they're having this big violent yeah. breakup. Well, I don't know. It looks like I'm sure the pendulum's going to swing right back to Carl for next week. So last week, uh, Carl got the win. This week, I personally feel like Lindsay got the win. But I'm sure Carl's going to get a win next week. I think that people are going to be super pissed at Lindsay this week. Again, I think that people for are pissed crushing off at her. Sports, sports yes, bar for not supporting his dream and for shitting all over it right when he came out with the dream. Because people are just full of shit. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh my god, but Carl's trying so hard. And I agree, Carl is trying so hard. But... We're old, like trying to do, do something. Stop trying to do something. Get a fucking job. I can't support somebody who's sitting here saying like, I don't have a job. I'm not going to have one. And now I want to take our money and open a fucking bar, even though I've never worked in one and never done anything but sell cases of something that's already selling because it's on a TV show. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I, not sorry. Uh, Why am I saying I'm sorry? Um, know, anyway, love... that's the end of this one. Thank you to everybody for being a member here on Patreon. We sure love you guys. Um, I'm up doing this. We'll talk to you next yeah. time. Bye, everyone. Bye.